fuck this video. Hey guys, welcome back to another Mod Bros video. In this video, we are going to be doing a little bit of a comparison between our HMI uh, dash R kit versus a standard CETA brass breech thing. So this is essentially, this is the Omni internals that I got when I first got the CETA and I switched out the breech to allow it to work with the brass breech that I have set up in here. So that way, all I need to do is I can fire it with one setup, take it apart, switch out the breach area in the plunder tube and switch over to ours and just to sort of give a comparison number between the two setups uh, I'm running just to 25 Newton so nothing like super spectacular for numbers it's mainly just hey this is what this hits with that setup and then change over and we'll see though so we're gonna start with this setup which is as I said it's the original Omni internals so it's running about the same plunder volume that you would get with your C to S alpha internals and it's running a brass breach so yeah all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop it into the CETA. Uh, I will say putting these internals into the CETA is more work <laughs> than mine because you have to click the plunder tube in and then there's just a bunch of things you need to make sure all line up properly and whatnot. It's honestly really annoying. <laughs> My internals are so much easier to fit. I'm not trying to brag or anything. Hashtag humble brag. Uh, additionally, I have to run a semi light spring because this is the original clear bolt sled that you get, and it is not that strong. Spoilers, it's a bad bolt sled. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, if you get the C to S, you might get a different bolt sled. I don't think so, though. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they just have the one, and it's not that great, in my opinion. <laughs> like, back when I first had this before I made the Hobie Internal, I was having a bunch of issues. Uh, but yeah, so it's running a brass breach, and we're just going to be firing off... Oh, this worker dart's broken. <laughs> oh, wow. What a surprise. All right, we're going to be firing off five worker Gen 3s through our little chronograph, just to get an average, and then we can switch over to the original setup. Uh, I don't really know, like, how optimal of a setup this whole thing is. In order to make this thing actually, like, good, I would need to, like, reinforce the plunder tube, get a metal bolt sled all that jazz and probably a stronger spring than what i have in there right now but i mean it's pretty light prime with a 25 newton chambers nicely so let's get to it 146 <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> i was gonna guess 150. so i mean uh maybe the barrel's a little too long for the plunder volume in this setup 167. so i mean like Decent numbers, I would say. Uh, this is definitely sort of showcasing 161. That uh, with a light spring, uh, with this particular setup, you're gonna need to run a heavier spring if you want to get to 200. 164. And sort of show you guys it chambering. And 160, and that's all the darts. So. An average of five worker darts get an average of 160. Hey, that's pretty, that's pretty all right. I mean, like, the C to S base sort of comes at that level, and I think, I don't know how a 25 Newton compares to the spring that comes in that. This 25 Newton, I have no idea how much compression it has. It has a little bit of pre-compression, but I don't think it's reaching full compression like I would like it to. Uh, I was gonna try and test this with the Hillman, but getting the Hillman to fit in here with all that pre-compression was dumb. All right, guys, so yep, uh, the uh, Brass Breach, CETA internals, XPT, this XPT only has around like 50 cc's, whereas this one has around 80. Uh, with the 25 noon, I was getting an average of 160 with Worker Gen 3s. So now I'm gonna switch it over to my setup. Let's see how she rolls. Oh, what we got there? What we got? Oh, what we Empties. Oh. Bad part. So I've never actually used my internals with the 25 Newton in this setup, so I'll be intrigued to see what numbers I get. Uh, I will say though, uh, for those of you who are wondering, I'm using, I was just using the uh, HMI-R catch. Uh, I didn't want to have to like switch the catch out in between the tests, but that just shows that our catch will work with standard rods. 
uh, maybe better than normal. I don't know. I don't really care. Uh, but yeah, so getting our shells to fit together is so much easier because once you have the bolts and everything lined up, it just sort of slides right on in. And I guess technically, yeah, you do have to apply some pressure when you're putting the pins in because it will open, whereas you don't have to do that on the stock version. See, I, you threw that worker dart at me, but I don't know where it went. It threw a rifle at you. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'll just start loading up the mag again. We're gonna do five more worker gen threes, and then we can compare the numbers. All right, guys, so I have the CETA set up with the original internals and everything running the 62 Hillman. I'm gonna be running the 62 Hillman in both tests, that way I keep it consistent, and firing off five worker gen threes in each test. The prime, ooh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> the prime is fairly easy. I just didn't pull it back all the way. <laughs> Well, uh, basically let it go, but yeah, so firing off five worker gen threes over our Saturnius chronograph. 107. <laughs> Whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, hmm. That can't be right. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Hang on. That's false. <laughs> 153. That's more like it. So I'm having some catching issues because I'm running the homemade internals catch. It should work, but I think I think just this rod is not the best. Oh Jesus! All right, well, uh, I think yeah, I think that's this test done. Uh, just not <laughs> getting it to consistently hatch or anything may need to rotate the plunger rod. Do I have the plunger tube in properly? Yeah, I do. Oops, I don't know why. Huh, I don't know why I wasn't catching. My catch looks fine. I'm gonna put it back together and see if I can get that working. Uh, if not, I'll just end this test there. Uh, I mean, running these internals, you can kind of expect some problems. I mean, this stock plunger rod is really not that good. The stock bolt sled's not very good. Uh, yeah, just, uh, all right. Got it, we'll just do one last shot. Yeah, 167, so I mean, uh, as you guys can see, a lot of problems, lots of just <laughs> not really working <laughs> with this setup. And I mean, like, the 62 helmet isn't even that strong of a spring. It's only around thir 13 kgs. It's fairly light to prime. Uh, it's just these internals <laughs> are not good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I totally could probably get better results running a lipped plunder tube and everything, but it just doesn't seem worth it in my mind. I hate bolt sleds. This, <laughs> this bolt sled design is terrible. Um, they just don't really work very well. A lipped plunder tube design is so much stronger and everything. Uh, so yeah. I mean, it works. Now I can sort of give you guys <laughs> a proper comparison, but I, <laughs> sorry, it hasn't really been working very well but yeah i'll switch over to uh our internal kit and then we'll see what kind of numbers we can get over the chronograph i'll i'll give it the benefit of the doubt and say like 160s with the hillman spring is all right because i mean i think i think what people have been getting with the c to s is around those numbers with like a relatively close spring and everything uh, but yeah, I just, I don't think those internals are sort of really set up for the Hillman, whereas ours are, so a little bit of a skewed test because I'm using a spring not really meant for those internals, but I wanted to show, I wanted to do a true comparison with what we sell in our kit, so I kind of had to make some sacrifices on that end. So sorry if you guys don't like that, but I mean, just really want to show off, so much easier to prime, it actually catches and holds and everything. And now I can fire off some worker Gen 3s with 
our internals over the chronograph. Make sure I'm actually lined up properly. 206. One ninety nine. Kind of chopped that dart a little bit, I think. Oh yeah, I got smushed a tiny bit. And two hundred. So averaging, averaging around two hundred with the sixty two hundred, which I'd say is, I'd say is pretty good. It's a really light spring. I mean, it's not, <laughs> not really hard to prime. I love it. Uh, but yeah, so averaging almost forty FPS higher, running the same spring and barrel setup. I'd say that's a pretty nice improvement from those internals to this because I am increasing the plunger volume by around 30 cc's and then also decreasing dead space and it's just a lot better. The prime is so much nicer because you're not having a flimsy this <laughs> this whole setup. Uh, you're not losing dead space because you have to have the plunger the breech go into the plunger head. It's just much more efficient design in my idea, in my opinion. A little biased, but whatever. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> This didn't really go as I planned. I would have loved if this has worked better, but I guess it just wasn't made for good things. <laughs> wasn't really made properly. I don't know why. Plunder Hub looks fine. I don't know. I just was having trouble catching. Uh, but yeah, so that's gonna be it for this video. Probably a really short one. Uh, and probably <laughs> a bunch of random cuts of me trying to get this stuff to work. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys got to see something, maybe learn a thing or two from me showing off some numbers. Uh, so yeah, I mean, like this is nowhere near like the optimal setup and whatnot, but it's still getting around 200 with pretty easy prime and getting 40 FPS higher than that. So even if my chronograph is reading high, the difference between them is really easy to tell. So thank you guys for watching. Drop us a like and a comment if you have any questions. And leave us a like if you liked the video, and we will check you out in the next one. Make sure to check out our Etsy and our Patreon, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.